In Module 2, Lesson 11, we are going to use the concept of fraction multiplication and apply it to our product of decimals. And in terms of our decimal positions, we're going to look at those place value positions. In class, we will or have completed an exploratory challenge in which we'll create posters showing how to solve the problems and also showing where the decimal should be placed in the, in the final answer. So we'll skip forward to the exercises and we'll complete those exercises as our samples. Question number one asks us simply to calculate the product of 324 and 56 hundredths times 54 and 82 hundredths. So we'll set the problem up and I will point out to you that decimal points do not have to be aligned in multiplication nor do you have to add zeros uh, to get your decimals in alignment either. So since there are four digits in the second number, we will have four rows of multiplication that we have to complete, one for each digit. The first row is 2 times 324 and 56 hundredths. The second row will then multiply the 8 times our top number. But when we're multiplying that 8, don't forget we need a 0 as a placeholder in the first position because we are now multiplying the second position. Then we move on to the third digit, which is a 4, and we'll multiply it times the top number, keeping in mind that now we will have to put two zeros in as placeholders to hold the place of those two places that we've passed up. And finally, our last digit, the 5, we'll need to add three zeros as placeholders. And at this point, we would, we would add up all of our columns. And then, in our final answer, to place our decimal point correctly, we'll look back at the original two factors and identify how many decimal place value positions we had in each of those factors. There were two in the first number and there were two in the second number. So we'll add the number of place value positions together. Two in this number plus two in this number is four place value positions. And we'll start at the right of our product and move over to the left four places and that's where we place our decimal point. Again, you look for the number, total number of decimal places that you have in your factors and you move from the right over to the left that total number of spaces. In example two, we have a more realistic word problem. Kevin spends $11.25 on lunch every week during the school year. If there are 35 and 5 tenths weeks during the school year, how much does Kevin spend on lunch over the entire school year? And they remind us to remember to round to the nearest penny because this is money and pennies are the smallest amount we can have. The clue words that we see in the word problem would be every week and entire school year. So if it's $11.25 every week, we would need to multiply that times the number of weeks in the school year. Again, looking at our rows, we would start by multiplying the five which is the furthest position to the right of our bottom number, times our top number. And we're ignoring the decimal point until the end. Then we multiply for our second row, we multiply the five again, times our top number, 
but since we are one place over, we'll need to put a zero in our first position to the right to hold that place. And finally, our third digit, the three, will multiply times the top number, but we will have to put two zeros to hold those place value positions we passed up. When we add our three products together, partial products together, we get 399375. We still, however, need to place our decimal point in the correct position. Again, the decimal point is going to be the total number of decil decimal positions in your factors, moving starting at the right and moving toward the left. So there are two decimal positions in the top number and one decimal position in the second number. Two places plus one place is three places. So we start at the right and we will move toward the left three decimal places and that's where we'll put our decimal point. This problem, however, told us to round to the nearest penny. And the penny is the hundredths position. So before we finish this problem, we actually need to round to this second place value position and the number after that is a 5. So the 5 tells us we'll need to round up to 38 cents. Our third problem, another word problem, Gunner's car gets 22 and 4 tenths miles per gallon and his gas tank can hold 17 and 82 hundredths gallons of gas. How many miles can Gunner travel if he uses all of the gas in the gas tank? When we set this problem up, I always put the larger, or shall I say the number with the most digits, on the top when I'm multiplying. That way I don't have to have as many rows because I'll need to have the same number of rows as I have digits in the second factor. So I'm going to put the 17 and 82 hundredths on top and then I'll put the 22 and 4 tenths below and that will make me only have to have three rows of multiplication. And again, since our second number has three digits, we'll have three rows of multiplication. The first one is the four times the top number. Then our second row will be this first two, or shall I say the middle two times the top number. But we need to put a zero in the farthest to the right place value position because that two is moving over one from the right. And then in our last row, it is 2 again times our top number, but because we moved over 2, we need to put two zeros in to hold those place, visit, place value positions. Then we add up all of our columns, and our final step is to put the, put the decimal point in our product, the total number of decimal positions that we have in the problem. So there are two decimal positions in our top number, and one decimal position in our bottom number, two plus one de decimal positions. And so we start at the right, move over to the left three places, and we put the decimal point right there. So the answer to our question then is, he can travel 399 and 168 thousandths miles if he uses all of his gas. Our final problem, the principal of East High School wants to buy a new cover for the sand pit used in the long jump competition. He measured the sand pit and found that the length is 29 and 2 tenths feet and the width is 9 and 8 tenths feet. What will the area of the new cover be? We find the area of a rectangle by multiplying the length times the width. So we are going to multiply 29 and 2 tenths times 9 and 8 tenths, and I'll put the 29 and 2 tenths on top because it has the most digits. And we can reduce the number of rows we have by multiplying 
the smaller number below. And again, since we have two digits in our second factor, we'll have two rows of multiplication. And our second row of multiplication will need that zero as a placeholder to the far right. And we add our columns up, we get 28616. And our decimal place will need to be one, two places from the right, because the total number of decimal positions that we have in our factors is two, one in this number and one in this number. And that means that our final answer then would be 286 and 16 hundredths square feet.